If there's one clip you should look at from Karin Amagaji, Yale left tackle, it's this one. This is all I need to know. What is cool and though? What is going on? I hope you guys are having a real good start to the day. And we are going to be talking about another NFL draft prospect, an underrated one that I think needs to start being talked about in the back end of the first round. I'm serious. Yale left tackle, Karin Amagaji. This dude is a legit stud. I could see him being a top talent that proves to be one of the better tackles in this draft class very easily. So let's go ahead and get into the film study and then we're going to break down his strengths and weaknesses in a scouting report. So let's start off with the film portion in the pass pro. Karen Amagaji, the Yale left tackle. First off, can he pick up stunts? Absolutely. Watch him early on in this rep. Diagnose the stunt. He's like, oh, he sees him coming inside. So what does he do? Give him a little bit of a shove. Boom. Knock right there. Look at the hand power, knocks him down to the ground, and then picks up that stunt effortlessly. Solid job, Karen Amagaji. Up top here, you see him. Just will go through some reps. Good hand placement. I love his hand placement. I think he does a really good job. He's got a nice strike. You see that little strike there? Let's go back to this here real quick. Here he comes. Boom! There it is. The little, he's got 30, 36 and 3 fourth inch hands. Those are monster mitts that he's got on him, man. Or monster wingspan. And he's also got some big hands too. Any which way, the dude is strong, he's powerful, and he's still got more room to grow. I think that he's going to continue to get stronger. And especially when you look in the lower half and the upper body too, he's a little thin. So just imagine, and this is that one rep we were talking about earlier. Let's just go back to this because of how good this is. So I'm sorry for the choppiness, but let's go back to how good of a rep this is. Look at him. I mean, just mirror effortlessly this edge rusher. Oh, you're moving back inside? All right, I'm moving back inside with you. Oh, you want to go back outside? No, okay, I'm going back inside with you. Oh, no, I'm going to try to go inside. Sorry. Down to the ground. Boom, knocks him down. Dude, that rep is just phenomenal, dude. That is all, like I said, that right there is all I need to know. Can he anchor down? Absolutely. Can get to the anchor as you saw right there. Let's take a look at uh, that real quick. Now, the hand placement might have been a little, let's take a look at this real quick here little wide possibly not really bad though and you know helms control once again the solid movement skills on display there for Karin amengaji let's see here nothing too crazy just another smooth rep as we get a close-up now he does have that defender kind of again hands maybe a little on the outside i'd like to see you Recounter and move your hands back inside reposition right that right arm could be moved but uh, he's trying to just hold leverage there that may be not you may not get away with that as much at the second level or at the nfl level right those are things you're gonna have to work on and one thing we will notice too with karen amagaji he's a two-hand puncher and that's something he needs to work on right not a lot of independent hand usage you see him here not a lot of counters those are things that are going to be exploited a lot more at the NFL level. Much better edge rushers are going to take advantage of that. But when you talk about what he brings right now to the table with those movement skills, with that length profile, it's going to work. It's just a matter of can he put the work in. And continuing to go over some of the things that I think he needs to work on. And one of them is just building out muscle mass. And you see his frame. like There is so much more uh, there to add. You see he's a little thin with his arms and his legs. So that's something where you get to the next level, you add a little bit of muscle mass over a season or so, and I expect by year two, year three, the NFL is going to put a lot more uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or peanut butter and banana sandwiches, as Botch Lombardi would say, and, and get you a lot stronger. So there's a lot of untapped potential. Now let's look at this rep here closely or closer and see why he lost this one. And this goes back to me. I mean, first off, that's fine on the quick set right there, but... It's the lack of independent hands. He's a two-hand puncher, and now he's over his toes. And his footwork's a mess. Can't make up for this, no matter what. I mean, he does, he, he does an admirable job of trying to get back over there because he is such a loose athlete. But at this point, when he, he misses his two-hand punch right there, he's over his toes. He's gone. This is a loss, and the edge rusher beats him to the edge. So those are things where just got to work on more utilization of his independent hands, not being so reliant on the two hand punches because that I just did not see like any independent hand usage on his film. So that is definitely a big area that he needs to work on. And once again, that kind of comes to display here. I mean, that wasn't a, a terrible loss. This is a quick set. He does a good job right there. Uh, but once again, just kind of gets beat to the outside shoulder and then loses that rep. 
Let's go into some run blocking reps. And he's got plenty of ferocity in the run game. And he's also really explosive off the line, too. Like, he can get to you in the backfield in a hurry. And you see, he, he's good at this leverage, too. I mean, there he's just driving dudes back, keeps the feet churning right here and, and on that other rep, too. He's, he's just plenty, plenty of leg drive at the second level. You see him, this linebacker's got nothing to do with him. And here he is again up here at the second level, number 72. Solid job. I mean, the linebacker does eventually get off, but he holds on long enough, right? And you obviously don't want to hold, but he does a good enough job to be able to allow a, a nice crease, a nice lane. He has a little bit of a just drive him, drive him out, keep the legs turning again. Really solid. Now, he does come in a little over aggressive at times, and or just kind of out of you know, out of control at the second level. There are moments where he's like this one, just a little bit out of control, and you know, doesn't maybe take his time and get to that second defender, kind of misses him out. So there are examples of that with him on his film. And then some speed, right? There's a little fumble. Here he is, Karin Amagaji. Well, let's see what type of speed he has, right? I mean, the dude is stride for stride. I mean, I'm not saying this guy's going full speed or nothing. He even makes the tackle. But it's just really fun to watch as this guy leading into a scouting report now. Pros, cons, starting off with the strengths with him. I mean, it's the tools. Of course, it's the tools. It's not just the tools, but I mean, 36 and 3 4 inch arms, that's tough to deal with, especially at the next level. Having that a length is going to, and he knows how to use that length. With Patrick Paul, he's got that length, but he has no clue how to use it at the moment. So that is why, for me, Corinne Amagaji, I would take Amagaji over Patrick Paul. And that's not to diss on Patrick Paul. I think he's got plenty of upside, and there's a lot of potential there, too. But with Amagaji, this guy knows how to use his tools. I love his footwork and overall athleticism. I mean, you see the explosiveness off the line in the run game, the lateral agility, as we were talking about, and many of the reps, and obviously that first rep, too. He is just such an easy mover at his size. Six foot five, 323 pounds is the ideal sweet spot, too. He can keep his leverage. I love that height for a left tackle. And you go into, you know, some of these other, the hand placement gets talked about with Amagashi. I like his hand placement. I have a problem with his independent hand usage, and that's something we'll get into in a minute. But his grip strength is good. He's got plenty of upper, I mean, he's got upper body strength. He's got a lot of strength considering, like, raw power. It's just I think he needs to build out his frame. And as we're talking about in the run game, he's got natural power, natural leverage that he's able to move guys. And now at the second level, of course, it's going to be uh, harder than that, right? He dominated here at the Ivy League, and, and that's good to see. You want to see that dominance. There's only so much you can do, right? You can't knock a guy for playing against guys that, hey, they may not go to the NFL, but they're still football players. They're still playing because they love the sport. Um, but on some negatives, as we're saying, independent hand usage. And another thing is maybe his hands are a little low at times. Maybe I didn't show that enough, but maybe, you know, get the hands up a little quicker. And that could also allow you for to lose some of those reps to the outside shoulder because then edge rushers can counter you there. It's easier access to chop your hands. Overall, though, I want to really see him work on his counters, work on his refined hand usage in terms of independent hands understanding leverages with rushers and stuff like that but he's really good at mirroring edge rushers which is really important keeping that head-to-head -head relationship which is in my opinion way more important you can teach some of those you know independent hands and things like that those you get better at with time um but and we talk about you need to add a little more muscle mass he's a little thin but he already added some muscle mass by the looks at it and coming you know back from that quads uh, and then yale competition we talked about that but once again that's a small nitpick you can only play against the competition you're playing against and and occasional misses at the second level from over aggressive tendencies that we were showing there at the end of the clips but not that you know big of a concern for me overall I, I don't hate it if you took this guy in the back end of the first round the 49ers I really would not hate this and you know what he may be a shocker on day one if it weren't for the injury I mean, he'll be ready to go for training camp this is not like it's a major injury or nothing like that I mean it's an injury and he was out for the season after week four of the Cornell game but it was just a partial tear quadriceps which again partial tear it's still a partial tear but anyway he should be fine for training camp and ready to go I mean he should be starting to get going now overall Corinne Amengaji I have a top 40 grade on him and if you are even in the back end of the first round, if you're the 49ers and you desperately need tackle or offensive line in general, hey, he played right guard too. So he's got experience at guard position. You can plug him in over there. Hey, figure it out, right? So he's got experience on both sides. I would 100% take him at the back end of the first round, top of the second. You're the commanders, New England Patriots, 
Oh, easily. Maybe you sign a veteran like a Donovan Smith in that case scenario or somebody of that nature. Problem, there are going to be some rookie struggles, of course, with any of these rookie tackles. I mean, it is a good rookie tackle class. And maybe Joe Old and Ola Fashano hit the ground running. There's going to be a couple of guys. But for me, long term, Corinne Amagaji, I could see this guy being an all pro. It's just all there. There's everything to succeed. If he's got the work ethic, if he's got the desire, he could easily be an all pro left tackle. I'm really a big fan. I really am. So let's keep an eye out on Corinne Amagaji, Yale left tackle. And I hope you guys have a really good day. My name is Shisling. I'm doing my thing. And I hope you do as well. Let me know what you think about Corinne Amagaji.